U.S. Navy's DDG-X destroyer will be more powerful, equipped with laser and hypersonic missiles. Introduction According to Rear Admiral Paul Schleis, U.S. Navy, Director, Naval Surface Warfare Division, DDG-51s have been in production for over 40 years with basically the same hull that the U.S. Navy started in 1985. The longer-range weapons cannot fit on the DDG-51 hull form, hence the pursuit of DDG-X. Kate Connolly, the Deputy Program Manager for the DDG-X program, gave a presentation on the key features of the next-generation successor to the DDG-51 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers that will grow out of their capabilities as new and future threats arise. According to Connolly, in December 2020, the Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Michael Gilday approved some of the top-level requirements for the DDG-X. Compared to DDG-51, the DDG-X will have the following improved capabilities. Mission the DDG-X will replace all Arleigh Burke-class destroyers in service for the past 40 years and assume the air warfare role of Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers. Radar Signatures Acoustic, infrared, and electromagnetic signatures will all be reduced by greater than 50%. The arrays will be larger, and DDG-X will have an upgraded X-band radar. Endurance Increased mobility with a range of greater than 50%, time on station increased to greater than 120%, and efficiency to greater than 25%. Sensor Packages The notional DDG-X design calls for 14-foot and slash spy 6 v 1 Aegis radars with the possibility of upgrading to an 18-foot tall Aegis radar in the future. Two Aegis radars are positioned on the forward and rear superstructure for a total of four arrays for 360-degree radar coverage. The tall bridge superstructure can mount future planar arrays, FPA, on the front face that may prove useful for early warning, electronic countermeasures, ECM, self-defense, signals intelligence, SIGINT, gathering, C5 ISR, anti-UAS, or for controlling UAS. DDG-X with an Air Warfare CIC DPM installed can remedy this space issue, and the larger 18-foot and slash spy 6 Aegis radar arrays and DPMs for more VLS cells in the future can make up for the Ticonderoga cruiser's air warfare role. Armaments The DDG-X appears to have a 5-inch gun turret forward and set further back from the bow than the DDG-51. 221-cell rim 116 rolling airframe missile RAM launchers will be mounted on DDG-X and a high-energy laser for close-in self-protection. Space reservations to add new systems, sensor growth, high-energy lasers, and to accommodate larger missile cells such as for hypersonic missiles than the Mark 41 Vertical Launch System, VLS, for longer-range offensive anti-surface and strike capabilities. The VLS cell count starts with a 32-cell VLS bank at the bow that can be upgraded to 12 large missile cell launchers in the future for accommodation of conventional prompt strike, CPS, hypersonic missiles, or future longer-range missiles that have dimensions larger than the Mark 41 VLS. The exact number of VLS cells so far is undetermined since certain DDG-X may be lengthened to accommodate more VLS cells, meaning no two DDG-X may be alike. It is unclear if there are any torpedo tubes, either deck-mounted or in a dedicated torpedo room, as standard armament fit, although the VLS cells should accommodate VLS ASROC. The DPM option appears to label two surface vessel torpedo tubes, SVTT. The current U.S. Navy ship standard is the Mark 32 triple-mount torpedoes, and if the DDG-X requires the ASW DPM to be installed to have torpedo tubes as part of the DDG-X armament package. Unmanned Surface Ship With the FPA and a DPM installed with UAS control consoles, the DDG-X could hypothetically control more unmanned drones for the U.S. Navy than any other warship in the fleet. The U.S. Navy needs a dedicated UAS ship control console room, and the U.S. Navy currently lacks this, except for UAS consoles and 40-foot shipping container modules that can be placed in literal combat ships and expeditionary sea bases. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.